relatively insignificant viruses responsible for about 15 to 30 percent of the common colds that essentially each and every one of us in this room experience every year. But what happened is in 2002, coronaviruses, which also have an animal reservoir, particularly among bats and other animals, actually jumped species, and we proved it retrospectively, that it jumped from a bat to what we call a civet cat, which is an animal that is served at, fest, at, at feasts, particularly in China, that it jumped from a bat to a civet cat to a human, leading to the disease which we now know as SARS, the, the uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome. That had 8,000 people and about 775 deaths for a death rate of about 9 to 10 percent. Then, about 12 years later, when we got to 2012, what we had was the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, another coronavirus, this one with a, with a death rate of about 36 percent. And lo and behold, now, in 2019 into, 2000, into, into 2020, we have a new novel coronavirus. The likelihood that this did the same pattern of jumping species is almost certain. We don't know exactly what the intermediate host was. So we're dealing with now something that's unique and troublesome, as we've seen the havoc that has been wrenched in, in, the, uh, in China with the number of cases they've had, is that this virus has adapted itself extremely well to transmissibility in humans. Some viruses, when they jump species, can be deadly, but they're very poorly adapted to humans. This one has the capability of spreading readily from human to human. It results in a pulmonary disease in those who have serious disease. The death rate, or what we call the case fatality rate, is about 2%, 2.5%. Whether that's the most accurate, we don't know, because it's conceivable that there are enough people who are below the threshold of detecting symptoms so that the denominator of that equation might be larger, hence the death rate may be less. But even that is a serious case fatality rate because seasonal influenza has a case fatality rate of 0.1%. So therefore, you have somewhat of a serious potential for morbidity and mortality. So right now, what we're seeing is that we're seeing this spreading through multiple countries that you can hear a bit about from Dr. Shuken. What we need to do now, obviously, is the containment as well as, if it comes to that, the mitigation of the effect of this. So we're dealing with a serious virus that we're taking very seriously because of its potential. So I'll stop there and we'll move on to and another. Uh, thanks, guys. Let's go press. Okay. Mr. Vice President, you can you clarify who is in charge of the task force? Is it you or is it Secretary Azar? Thank you. Uh, the President has asked me to lead our administration's effort in response to the coronavirus. Are you leading the task force? Uh, I'm uh, leading the task force. Um, we'll continue to rely on the Secretary's role as chairman of the task force and the leader of Health and Human Services. But uh, we've known each other for many years. We work together very closely over the years, and the President has every confidence in the Secretary, as I do. But uh, the President uh, wanted to make it clear to the American people that we're going to bring a whole-of-government approach to this. Uh, the President wanted to make it clear that what a priority this is for him and for our administration. And to that end, I also spoke today uh, and last night with the Republican and Democrat leadership of the House and Senate. We're already beginning discussions over an additional supplemental bill. Uh, we'll be leading on the task force for guidance. Um, but those were productive conversations and very positive. This is a, a time when uh, the President's made clear we want all hands on deck. Uh, and uh, my role uh, is to uh, uh, help lead this effort uh, with the White House Corona Task Force, but also engage our governors. Uh, engage local officials, including mayors around the country, and work with members of Congress on Capitol Hill to make sure that all the agencies represented here and our state and local partners have the resources they need. Vice President. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
So we started this story as looking into the organization. Our efforts continue apace. We are continually engaging with host governments in the Asia Pacific region to ensure they are informed of our policies and that we can share information and best practices to address this outbreak. We successfully encouraged Beijing to accept U.S. experts in the WHO mission to China. On February 7, 2020, the United States government announced that it is prepared to provide up to $100 million in existing funds to assist countries, including China, impacted by and at risk from the virus. Assistance to contain and combat COVID-19 will be provided bilaterally and through multilateral organizations. This commitment, along with the hundreds of millions generously donated by the American private sector, demonstrates strong U.S. leadership in response to the outbreak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I look forward to answering your questions and those of other members of the subcommittee. Thank you, Mr. Fritz. Um, Mr. Brownlee. 